There are six primary logic gates that are used to build pretty much everything. There's eight if you include an inverter and a buffer, uh, but mostly I'm just going to talk about the main six. And they are OR, NOR, AND, NAND, Exclusive OR, and Exclusive NOR. Now, NOR and NAND are very interesting because they're universal logic gates. And that means that you can build any other logic gate using just that logic gate. Uh, and also exclusive OR and exclusive NOR are quite complicated logic gates and they're really difficult to build in a simple manner. And so for now, we're just going to ignore uh, exclusive OR and exclusive NOR. And let's focus on those first four, OR, NOR, AND, NAND. And it turns out that there's actually pretty easy ways to build these four gates with vacuum tubes. And so that's what I want to look at today. I want to uh, pull out some a 6AU6 and a 6DJ8, so that's a pentode and a dual triode, and let's build these four logic gates on our breadboard. So let's hop over to the bench and get started. Let's go ahead and start with the easiest gate, and that is the OR gate. So we'll start with an input of 24 volts, because that's what my power supply puts out, and that's what we're running as plate voltage on all the tubes. Uh, and then we have two little push buttons, and these will be our two inputs. And then we'll run those through some diodes, and then we'll hook those diodes together, and then uh, run them out through an LED on the bottom here. Um, and that's, that's an OR gate. If I push one of these buttons, power comes from 24 volts through the diode out through our LED. If I push the other one, it's the same thing. Uh, and so that's super easy. Now you could make uh, these two diodes out of a dual diode vacuum tube, like the 6AL5. And we've done that in the past, but I'm not actually opposed to using uh, silicon diodes for this. So uh, that makes things a lot more compact. And if we look at some of IBM's computers from the late 50s, they were using germanium and selenium diodes as well. So it's still not period incorrect. Um, okay, so how do we make a NOR gate from here? Well, we, we just take the output from our OR gate and we run it through an inverter. Right? And so that's what we have on the other half here. And so you can see that the output from our OR gate goes through our little resistor network here. And we go through a 22,000 ohm resistor, uh, and then we have a 33,000 ohm resistor hooked up to negative 12 volts. And then coming out of the middle of those two, we go through a 4.7 thousand ohm resistor into the control grid of our tube. And in, in this case, we're using a 6AU6 pentode. I quite like this little tube, but it means we have to hook up a, a few extra things. And so you can see that the suppressor grid up here is tied to the cathode, which is tied to ground. And then we have the screen grid here tied to 24 volts through a 100 ohm resistor. And then we have a 10,000 ohm resistor coming from 24 volts into our plate. Uh, and then just after that 10,000 ohm resistor is our output. And we send our output through a 22,000 ohm resistor and a 10,000 ohm resistor voltage divider here. And the reason is that our output on this swings from about 6 volts to 24 volts. And so to make sure that, first of all, we don't blow our LED up, but also that at a logic low, which is like 6 volts, our LED is off, we use a voltage divider to bring that output voltage down. So this is a pretty simple setup. Let's just go ahead and build this out on the breadboard right quick, and we can see it in action. So I've got my breadboard set up here, and I've already done just a little bit of preparation. So I have uh, these jumpers set up for our tube. The tube will go here, and it'll get uh, 6 volts in ground from our little regulator over here. Uh, and then I have uh, ground plus 24 and then minus 12 volts on these three rails on the bottom. And you can see I've already got uh, two little buttons hooked up to the plus 24 volt rail here. Uh, and that's what these two little wires are here. So I figured we'll just go ahead and build the OR and NOR gate. And we'll start with the OR gate. And that's uh, pretty simple. We just have these two little diodes. We'll go ahead and just pop those in right quick. There's one. And then there is two. And then coming off those uh, two diodes, we have a little 22,000 ohm resistor. Um, and I don't really need to use a resistor that big, but I wanted it to be the same brightness as all the other LEDs. And so we'll also use a little uh, 10,000 ohm resistor as a voltage divider here. There we go. Now that should be a uh, working OR gate. So if I push one of these buttons, that LED should come on. There we go. Nice. If I push both buttons, of course, it comes on. So, well, that was pretty easy. Uh, let's, let's step it up a bit. Let's go ahead and run the output of this into an inverter for our NOR gate. Well, first things first, we need to set up our little vacuum tube as an inverter here. And so we know that the suppressor grid gets tied to the cathode. And so that's pins two and seven. So I'll just use a little jumper to jumper across those. All right. 
And then we know that our output comes off of pin five because that's our plate. So I'll use another jumper to pull our output out to someplace where we can actually uh, use it. And our plate also has a 10,000 ohm resistor that connects it up to 24 volts. And the screen grid needs a little 100 ohm resistor that connects it to 24 volts. And the screen grid is actually pin six. So we can just put that right next to the 10,000 ohm resistor. And then we need to connect our cathode to ground. So I'll just use a little jumper for that as well. And then coming off our input, we have a little 4.7 thousand ohm resistor and our input is going to be pin one. So we'll just go ahead and hook that up there. And then on the other side of this 4.7 thousand ohm resistor, we have a 33 thousand ohm resistor to pull it to negative 12 volts. And then we have a 22 thousand ohm resistor connecting it to our dual diodes here. Then our output, which comes out of this little orange wire here, runs through a 22,000 ohm resistor, and then that goes through an LED to ground. Uh, and then we had a just a little 10,000 ohm resistor as our voltage divider resistor across that. So the only thing we're missing is our vacuum tube. And I've got my little 6AU6 here, so we'll go ahead and just uh, plug that guy in, and we'll turn the power on. All right, and we see our, our little green LED illuminated here. We'll give the vacuum tube a little bit of time to warm up. Now this LED should be the exact opposite of this LED. So if I push either button, this LED should turn off and this one should turn on. Let's, let's give that a shot, see what happens here. There we go. Look at that, and if I push both buttons, it goes off. All right, so we have an OR gate and an OR gate. So we've built an OR and an OR. That's awesome. Well, the next gate that I wanna try and build is a AND and an AND gate. So let's hop back to our notes and take a look at how we're gonna do that. OR and NOR were quite easy to build, but AND and NAND are a little more involved. And uh, actually, if you remember, we reverse engineered a little module from an IBM vacuum tube computer, and it was actually a dual NAND gate. And that gives us a pretty good idea of how we're going to build our NAND gate today. Except that the inputs to that little dual NAND module had a voltage swing from a negative to a positive voltage. And we ended up using negative 12 to plus 24. But I don't want to build all the extra signal restoration circuitry that the IBM was using to bring that signal down to those levels. And so we're going to take that idea and we're going to modify it just a little bit. Uh, and so first of all, just like before, we're gonna start with our two little push buttons that come off of 24 volt, and we're gonna run those through uh, two 22,000 ohm resistors. And then we'll go ahead and run them into this very interesting diode resistor setup. You can see that our inputs come and hit in between a diode and a resistor. And this resistor is 33,000 ohms and connected to negative 12 volts. And then the diode is connected both to our our input that's gonna go into the tube, as well as 24 volts through a really big resistor. I'm using uh, 220,000 ohms here. And what this is gonna end up doing is that whenever we aren't pushing the buttons, the, the 24 volts through the 220,000 ohm resistor is a lot weaker than the negative 12 volts here. And so we're gonna end up with a negative voltage at this point right here. Now what happens whenever we push a button is that we run 24 volts into this junction between this diode and this resistor. And what that does is it brings the potential on the bottom side of this diode up to a positive voltage. And so if we just hit one button, it doesn't really matter because the, the other one is still at a, a negative bias, which is gonna keep our, our negative bias on the grid over here. Uh, but if we hit both of the buttons, we're now completely blocking this negative 12 volts from getting here. Now the 24 volts that's coming in here can't go and influence our, our grid because the, the diodes are stopping it. But this 220,000 ohm resistor on the 24 volts here will pull that potential of the grid high. And so you can see that coming right off here, we go through a 4.7 thousand ohm resistor and that's essentially affecting our grid on a triode. Now I'm using a triode here because I'm going to end up using a dual triode and we'll see why here in a second. But uh, for this triode, you can see that we have the cathode tied to ground and we have uh, the plate tied to 24 volts through a 10,000 ohm resistor. And then our output comes directly off the plate and we come through a 22,000 ohm resistor. And just like before, we have a 22,000 ohm and a 10,000 ohm voltage divider and our little LED. And this is a NAND gate. So you can see that if we're not pushing 
either of the buttons, this potential right here at the grid is going to be negative, which means the tube is going to be in cutoff, which means that our output is going to be essentially pulled up to 24 volts, which is going to turn our LED on. And if I push one button, that doesn't change the, the grid voltage here. Or if I push the other button, it doesn't change the grid voltage here. But if I push both buttons, our grid will be pulled high through this resistor to 24 volts here which will allow the tube to conduct, which will pull our output to a potential that's closer to ground. And I think that ends up being about uh, five volts and that turns our LED off. So that's a NAND gate. So we have a NAND gate here. Now, in order to make an AND gate from our NAND gate, we just need to take our output here and invert it. And you can kind of get an idea of what's going on through this little resistor here, but we take the output through a 22,000 ohm resistor, and then we have a 33,000 ohm resistor to negative 12 volts, and then we take our 4.7,000 ohm resistor into the grid, and well, this is just a standard inverter. And since our output will be high, unless both buttons are pushed, uh, this grid is pulled high, which means this tube is conducting, which pulls the output of, of this triode closer to uh, ground, and that turns our LED off down here. But if I push both buttons, that pulls our output of the first triode low, uh, which means that this tube stops conducting because the, the input onto the grid here is pulled to a negative, a negative bias. And that means that our output here is pulled high and this LED comes on. And so that is our AND gate. And so using one dual triode and a whole lot of resistors and a couple of diodes, uh, we, can, we can make a NAND gate and an AND gate. And so let's pull our breadboard back out and we'll go ahead and build this up on the breadboard and see what it looks like. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed our 6AU6 uh, just to keep it out of the way for now. And I've also taken our two buttons and I've extended them over to here so we can build our NAND and our AND gate over here. Uh, and so we'll just go ahead and start building that. So if we remember our schematic, we go through two 22,000 ohm resistors off of the output from both of our buttons here. So I'll go ahead and hook those up. And then on the other side of those two 22,000 ohm resistors, we go through a 33,000 ohm to negative 12 volts. So we'll go ahead and put those 33,000 ohmers in. And then out of this junction in the middle, we go through two little diodes. And so I've got my two diodes here and we'll just hook those up. So we've got our input mostly figured out, but before we start connecting our input up to our dual triode here, let's go ahead and do a little basic setup for our dual triode. And so the first thing is that our plate uh, is going to go through a 10,000 ohm resistor. So we'll just go ahead and run that 10,000 ohm resistor into there. Uh, and the cathode is tied to ground. So we'll use a little jumper to tie our cathode to ground here. And then our output, we want to go through an LED. So I'm just gonna use a tiny little jumper to move our output off of the plate to a place where we can run it through a little LED and use it. Now, when it runs to that LED, we run it through a 22,000 ohm resistor, and then we hook our LED up, and then we have a 10,000 ohm resistor as our voltage divider for that LED. All right, now coming off of this spot where our two diodes go together, we actually go in two different directions. We have a 220,000 ohm resistor that takes it to 24 volts. So we'll go ahead and hook that up just like that. And then we have our 4.7 thousand ohm resistor hooking it up to the grid of the triode. So let's go ahead and just hook you up like that. Now that should be everything. So uh, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and remove these LEDs off of our OR and NOR gate to make it a little easier to see what's going on. And we'll go ahead and install our dual triode. Granted, we're only going to be using one triode of the two that are in there. All right, we'll turn the power supply on. Give the tube a second to warm up here. Now the LED is on, but it should actually be on. And it should be on for pretty much all states unless both buttons are pushed. So let's push one button, that LED should stay on. Okay, we'll push the other button. Okay, let's push both buttons and the LED should go off. Yes. Yes, <laughs> look at that, we have a NAND gate. Awesome. All right, well, I'll go ahead and turn, turn the power back off and we'll pull our tube out and let's make an AND gate now. 
Now, in order to make the AND gate, we have to take the output of our NAND gate and run it into this other triode over here. So let's go ahead and do the basic setup on that triode. And that is, we have a 10,000 ohm resistor to 24 volts on the plate. And then we tie the cathode to ground. All right, and then our output is going to be coming right off of the plate. And I'll use this green wire to move our output over to a place where we can run an LED off of it. And then uh, again, for that output, we have a 22,000 ohm resistor that goes into our LED. And then we have a little 10,000 ohm resistor that we use as our voltage divider. All right, well, we're, we're running a little tight on space here, uh, but I think we can make it work. And what I need to do is I need to take the output of our NAND gate. I need to get it over here where I can start running uh, the proper resistors. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use a little jumper to put the output of our NAND gate into one of the empty spaces in between the two tubes. And then I'll use our 22,000 ohm resistor as the resistor that comes off of that. And then on the other side of that 22,000 ohm resistor, we have a 33,000 ohm that goes to negative 12 volts, and then a 4.7 thousand ohm that comes right on back to the control grid. Okay, that, that should be everything. Let's plug our tube back in. Turn it on, give it a second to warm up. Now both LEDs turned on, but as the tube warms up, we should actually see this AND gate LED turn off. There we go, did you see that? It, it dimmed out and turned off. That was as the tube got warm enough for electrons to start flowing through it, we saw that the LED faded out and turned off. All right, so we have a NAND gate on this side. If I push one button, it should, this LED should stay on and this LED should stay off. Okay, if I push the other button. Okay, now if I push both buttons, this LED should go off, that LED should go on. Awesome. Oh, there we go. So we have a NAND gate and an AND gate. And on this side of the board, we, we have a OR gate and an OR gate. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and put our tube back in here and our LEDs and turn it on so we have all four running at the same time. All right, so we have OR, NOR, NAND, and AND. Now, if I push one button, we should see the OR and NOR gate doing something. Yep, if I push the other button, yep. Now, if I push both buttons, these two middle LEDs should turn off and the two outside LEDs should turn on. Yes! Oh, that's so cool. That's super cool. So there we go, we have four functioning logic gates on here. And, and with these four logic gates, we can build some pretty wild, complicated stuff. This is, man, this is so cool. I love building logic gates out of these tubes. Uh, it gets to be a little bit of an organizational nightmare on the breadboard, but uh, man, it's, it's worth it just to, just to see those little LEDs change states like that. That's awesome. All right, well, I'm gonna keep playing with my little logic gates here and uh, well, we'll see y'all in the next episode.